Hi, Lizzie. It's Maria from B&H. I heard you were speaking at Optic this year, and I figured I'd introduce you to the audience. Do you have time for 21 questions? Well, sure. Yeah, definitely I do. Okay, awesome. so I'm just going to uh, plug in my headphones first. Give me one second. We are good to roll. <laughs> awesome. So first question, what do you do for a living? For a living, I take... Um, I always sound kind of weird when I say it, but I take selfies, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I combine landscapes with self-portraiture um, in, in an ethereal kind of whimsical way, uh, walking out into the mountains and setting up to take self-portraits, often quite a distance from the camera and uh, just kind of immersing myself in nature. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. It's very unique. Yeah, it is quite. Thank you. <laughs> so what's on the agenda for today? <laughs> on the agenda for today, I am experimenting with putting together videos. Um, I'm starting to work on doing little short films. So that's what I'm working on today. <laughs> cool. And yeah. has this quarantine affected your workflow at all? This quarantine, uh, yes, definitely. Um, the, all the parks and everything nearby have been closed down, so I've been spending a lot of time just hanging around at home, and it's been nice for getting a lot of editing and stuff done, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely put travel and getting into nature and shooting on a hold, so I'm just at home trying to plan out what's next. Yeah. And yeah. so what got you started into photography in general? What got me started, I was 12 years old when I stole my dad's little point and shoot. It was the first digital camera that I had ever seen. And <laughs> um, yeah, I was addicted. It was love at first sight. I was always into art and drawing and whatnot growing up. So when I found the digital camera, it was like a new form of art where I could instantly take photos of nature and wildlife and stuff and I got hooked right from the get-go. Do you remember what point and shoot it was? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember at all. And you mentioned Sorry, kind of the the whimsical style that you have uh, now do. What got you into that? Yeah. How did you solidify that idea? Well as I got more and more into photography I uh, in the year 2010, I decided to step out of my comfort zone because um, I knew in order to grow as a photographer, I needed to push myself and challenge myself. So I decided to do a 365 project of self-portraits, uh, taking self-portrait every day for a year. And it was by the end of that project that I realized um, that I had found my uh, niche, I guess you could say, uh, immersing myself in nature, combining my new skill is self-portraiture for my first love of nature. And then after that, I just realized that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show what it was like to connect in nature the way I had been. And why self-portraits and not maybe getting a model? Because <laughs> I was very shy. I was, uh, yeah, I always spent more time with animals and in nature just by myself. So I was too scared to shoot with models. Um, I had some lovely friends, of course, but I spent most of my time by myself and with my animals. So it was a, a great way to like be creative and um, go on my own time. I could go adventuring and I got really into like knowing what I wanted, how I wanted to pose and everything. So the thought of trying to direct somebody else was kind of scary. <laughs> I've gotten better at it now, but when I first started out, I was just much more comfortable shooting with just myself. And yeah. so what's your go-to camera and lens? My go-to camera is the Sony a7R 3 and my go-to lens, that's a hard one. <laughs> but What are I some of your favorites? <laughs> some of my favorites, okay. The, um, the 24 to 70, one point, or no, 2.8, uh, that one can be used for most of my work, I guess I use it for about half. And then I also have my 85 millimeter 1.4. Uh, 
as well as a 135 millimeter 1.4. And then aside from your point and shoot, what was your first camera that you really used to master? Uh, that would be the Canon 60D, which I had from 2010 up until it must have been 2016 when I switched to Sony. And yeah, that camera served me quite well, but it was time to move on to something better when Sony right. came along. <laughs> and so I heard that you're going to be speaking at this year's B&H's Virtual Optic, and teaching is a big part of what you do, right? Yeah, it never used to be. And then the last few years, I've just kind of stepped into it. I used to be quite scared to teach. Like I said, I was quite shy and <laughs> <laughs> didn't photo shoot with lots of people. And, uh, but I never realized how many people were interested in my work and wanted to learn how to do what I do. So I, yeah, the last couple of years, I've been stepping out of my comfort zone again and doing public speaking and I've started teaching workshops and it's actually been really fun. I was really scared at first, <laughs> but uh, being able to connect with people and be creative together and lift each other up and learn together, it's been great and I see it as being a huge part of my future as well. That's great. And now with yeah. the quarantine, a lot of people have been adapting to virtual workshops and learning. Have you been doing either teaching or learning yourself? Uh, yes, I, like I said before, I'm learning uh, how to edit videos, which is a whole new learning curve for me. Um, and I'm also, I created a Patreon account so that I could start or practice teaching more, but online. So on that, on my Patreon, I'm releasing editing tutorials and I'll start releasing um, behind the scenes when I'm out shooting in the field as well. So yeah. it's great. And then you've gained a pretty good following now on social media. Has social media helped you in your career and kind of show the world what you do? Uh, yes and no. I would say social media, when I first started out on Flickr, that was uh, where I gained my initial following and made lots of friends who inspired me. And I'm pretty sure I just stepped in dog poo while I'm walking through the yard. That's kind of nasty. <laughs> oh my, gross. <laughs> um, uh, and then when things started uh, moving over to Instagram, that's where I got most of my following. But I never really noticed uh, that it really launched my career from my following. I think what helped me the most with that was the initial connections I made over 10 years ago back through Flickr. The friends I made on there, we've been really close and are, we're always lifting each other up and supporting each other and uh, connecting each other to the opportunities we get. And yeah, so I think it's with them always helping others and being helped by the people that I connected with in the early days. Uh, and even these days, new people that I'm becoming friends with and forming those connections, the opportunities I get are always coming from that. Yeah. And then, so you do a lot of different things from teaching to photographing and connecting. What's your favorite part of what you do? My favorite part of what I do? Wow, I love it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess uh, my favorite part, though, I guess, would be just generally being out in nature. Because um, that's where it all started for me, just being outside, being present in the moment, enjoying the beauty and trying to capture it. So, yeah being out there in the mountains, in the forest, or in my backyard, which is the best I can do for now. True. <laughs> yeah. And then, so what are some great tips to give to somebody who's trying to create self-portraits in the style of what you do? Some tips for people trying to create self-portraits. My biggest tip would be get a tripod, get a remote. Oh, I locked my dog out. Hold on. <laughs> <Come on Pepper. laughs> um, and the remote has been the best thing for me, uh, an intervalometer kind of remote. Um, yeah, that would be my best tip, get an intervalometer and plug it into the camera, set it up to take photos every two or three seconds while you're walking out in front of the camera. 
Um, I used to just do the self timer method for selfies, and that was hard, like running a that's in front stressful. Of the camera as fast <laughs> as you can for ten seconds, and you get one photo and have to go back. So yeah, the intervalometer method is my hot tip. <laughs> um, then you can take like a hundred photos, however many you want, in one go. Uh, which has been great for me because usually it's like one out of every hundred photos that comes out semi-graceful. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And so you just uh, mentioned your dog. And is that the dog yeah. that we see in some of your photos? It sure is. This is Pepper down here being all cute and snoozing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a great dog. He's super loyal. He comes with me on all of my photo shoots. Um, great company. A bit of a turd sometimes, <laughs> but he's the best of them. Don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> and during this quarantine, so since we've all been home, not being able to travel as much, a lot of people have taken up cooking during their free time. Have you gotten into any <laughs> new recipes? I've been going really hard at banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> I I tried to make my first banana bread loaf three weeks ago, and it came out so bland. <laughs> so this weekend I tried third time's the charm, and I tried it again, and it came out pretty perfectly. So Great. I'm feeling quite proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, I think I got banana bread down. <laughs> And so your photos always show you or your subject in such beautiful places. Where has been your favorite place to photograph? I think my favorite place has to be Golden Ears Provincial Park, which is almost in my backyard. It's about a five or 10 minute drive away. And it's got beautiful mountains, the lake, and a fairy tale like forest. Um, all my favorite kind of locations are all just in that one park and mm -hmm. I never get tired of it. I think about, it's gotta be over 50% of my photos oh. are all taken there. And if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? I would be either a dog walker or a dog trainer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought I was gonna be growing up until wow. photography stole my heart. Yeah. Always love the dogs. And do you work alone? I do work alone, yeah. I, I find, well, I started uh, being out in nature alone with just my dogs, and um, I've always found that I connected better just being one-on-one -on -one out in nature, and that's where my creativity came from, my inspiration. And even though I love uh, collaborating with people now and doing photo shoots with others and exploring with others, there's still something so special um, to me about just going out by myself and working alone, going back to my roots and feeling that one-on-one -on -one connection with what I'm doing. So since you work alone, you have to do the location scouting and the pre-production all by yourself. What exactly are you looking for when you do that? Um, I never really plan ahead, I've realized. I usually, I'll just pack my stuff in my camera bag, go prepared, uh, but my first goal when I'm going out um, I'll be ready to do a photo shoot, but my goal is to enjoy nature and hike and explore and see what I can find. And if an opportunity presents itself, if I stumble upon a scene and the lighting and everything lines up just right, then the inspiration might strike and I'll take a photo. But otherwise, when I'm exploring, in the back of my mind, I see these places and I'm like, oh, this would be great at this hour or mm -hmm. like at sunrise or sunset. And so I kind of keep all of that in the back of my mind and I might come back and take photos at that time. But for the most part, there's not much planning ahead, um, just exploring, which is my version of location scouting, I guess. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And aside from your camera, what's your favorite piece of gear? Um, well, my intervalometer that I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know if chocolate counts as a gear, <laughs> but it's always in my camera bag. <laughs> <laughs> and if there were to be a movie about yourself, who would play you? This is a hard question, and I don't know why I'm imagining Kate Winslet, but <laughs> that's who I'm thinking of. <laughs> well, she's pretty graceful, and your photos are pretty graceful, so I see it. Oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> and who should we interview next? 
Who should you interview next? Uh, Joel Robison has some wonderful, delightful storytelling type photos. I think he would be well deserving of an interview. Okay, awesome. We'll definitely yeah. contact him. And that's all the questions I have for you today. All right. Well, I got to jump back into my uh, attempt at editing videos here. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much for calling. It's awesome. been a pleasure answering these questions. Thank you so much. <laughs>